ABC Mid North Coast with Michael Spooner. Nice to have your company at 11 minutes past nine. Well, there's been a uh, national anti-CSG petition circulating, which this weekend will be presented to the federal member for line, Dr David Gillespie. It's called the Big Ban CSG Petition, and whilst it's a national petition, three quarters of the signatures on it are from the federal seat of line. Uh, Jennifer Schorpler is one of the concerned residents uh, from Killawarra, west of Wingham, who's helping been he's been helping collecting the signatures, and she joins me now. Jennifer, good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. Yeah, How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, now, tell us, of course, need, need we ask really, but just just uh, give us the the exact sort of objective of the big ban CSG petition. Is it for a ban just in New South Wales or or CSG right across the country? No, um, the Big Ban was designed as a, a federal petition. It is a federal petition. And I suppose the reason I went down that path originally is because I can't contemplate the fact that it's OK for one area to be excluded from CSG mining and another area to be given the green light. I mean, it, to me, it, doesn't, it seems that no, no human being, no ecology... Um, no environment should be, um, have, you know, have, have CSG inflicted upon it. Did you originate um, the, the petition, Jennifer? Yes, I did, I did. Or, or initiate, I suppose, I mean, yeah. Yes, I did and, and did the, the research and, and drew them up and had them approved and all that sort of thing. And basically it was a bit of a reaction to a, a decision that came down, I think it was early last year, in February, perhaps, uh, where Tony Burke made a couple of decisions. One was to give the green light to some facets of the Gloucester um, AGL activities mm -hmm. and another one was uh, to not give the Tarkine in Tasmania um, a preservation order that it deserved. And I was just overwhelmed with the, 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 just the idea that these things had been given the OK was horrifying to me, and there I went. So you've, you've been collecting the signatures since uh, last year? Yes, around about March, I suppose, we got it rolling. OK, uh, 12 months. Now, I mentioned three-quarters of the signatures are from uh, the federal seat of line, which is in some sense not surprising given that you initiated it. Where else are the signatures, have, have they come from? Well, it's, it's gone on social media, so it's, it's spreading bit by bit all over, all over the country, and there are some areas where there's a little bit more push than others because they have immediate concerns it's in their face as it were so it's trickling in to the post box and this week we're hoping that there'll be a lot come in because we've just called in the petition saying right we're ready to present them is there, is there um, a reason for that time is there a, is there some sort of timing to that how that well, ready to present there, there there is um one thing is that that the number of signatures is not as relevant in federal Parliament as it is in state. I mean, there's a, there's a good carrot to, to go the 10,000 signatures in the, in the state legislation. But with the, the federal one, I think it's, it's a very, you know, pardon the pun, but it's a very hot topic at the moment. And I think this is the time to get it in. And otherwise, next week being the last sitting week in Parliament, otherwise we'll be waiting till May. And I think this is just the time. I've discussed it with all the people that are helping. We just think it's the time to, to have this table. And how many signatures have you got already? Well, on the, the ones that we have in, and bearing in mind that there's two separate petitions, there's your, your um, Senate petition and, and your rep, so upper and lower house. Um, we have over 5,000 on both of those, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that many more will come in this week. I, I imagine that could be hundreds, if not thousands, will come in this week. Okay, so it's a hard copy paper petition. There's a reason for that, isn't there? Yes, there is. Um, a lot of people have a lot of faith in online petitions, and I mean, in a way, they're great more or less as a survey, I think, a, um, an indication of what people feel, but the, the, the cold hard fact is it can't be tabled in Parliament. And this is why you have to go to the trouble, and, and it's quite a lot of trouble, 
to have the paper and ink petitions and there's all sorts of rules and people can't sign on the back and this and that, all sorts of things that will in invalidate signatures or petitions. So we've had to be very careful about that and there's a lot of man hours going into collecting those signatures. Yes, I was unaware that a, an online um, survey couldn't be presented, although I could understand that there's a lot of uh, variables that can't be monitored when something's online. And now you've, uh, let's get down to the, to the number of the matter. Now you've arranged to give this petition to the federal member for line, David Gillespie. Uh, tell, uh, firstly, when's that going to happen? Right, well, we've had an undertaking from him that we'll be able to meet him at 5pm on Sunday at um, Port Macquarie Airport, actually, when he's boarding to go down to Canberra. So that's terrific that he's given us that opportunity, that little window of time. Um, my, my concern was that I didn't want to post it or something like this. I've got a responsibility to all those people that have signed. And I really wanted to hand it over to him personally. Um, we, so he's taking it down to Canberra. What we haven't heard back about yet is whether or not he, he's going to table it for us. This is our dearest wish. We have asked a number of times of a bit of an email exchange that he actually made the undertaking to actually table it himself based but, on the fact that many thousands of those signatories are from line. So, so, he, so, he, so he has or he hasn't committed to table it? No, I'm afraid not yet, but that may just be an oversight. I'm hoping that, that when I speak to him on Sunday that he'll be able to say, yes, these, these are my constituents, there's thousands of signatures here, I need to be the one to table that petition for my people. Okay, and what happens to it then? What happens if it's not tabled? Well, if it's not tabled at all, um, all that effort and all that goodwill and all the, the people that believe they're putting their name to something will, will go to nothing, but... Oh, look, I find it very difficult to imagine that, that he wouldn't table it. Um, that, I, I just wouldn't even want to go there. I mean, apart from his obligation to represent the people of Lyme, uh, he, he, uh, is a federal member obliged to table every petition that's given to him or not? No, I believe they're not obliged to necessarily, but I think considering the, the, the numbers on that petition and the fact that it's a an approved petition that was approved by the committee, so it can't be, you know, necessarily invalid or something like that. That would be a different matter. But considering that it's a, if if it is approved as a valid petition, which I'm confident it will be, I cannot imagine any, um, you know, principal, you know, member of parliament refusing to table a petition of this size. So I really, I, I don't, I have no doubt that that he'll be, he'll be taking it down. All, all, all I want to know is that he will also make that undertaking to personally table it, not just throw it into the ring as another, here's another petition. I, I would like it to have more respect than that. Who approves it as, as a ballot petition? The petitions committee do that. And I actually did run the, like, emailed them the, the copies of the petitions at the time when they were written and they in, more or less said, well, we can't see any reason why those petitions won't be won't be valid. As okay, long so you've been pretty the rigorous office. about the process to, to make very, sure that very much so, very mm. much so. Mm. Jennifer, well, it's my responsibility to those people that are signing and the people that are collecting to make sure it's not going to be invalid. Yep. Um, well, um, look, thanks for joining us uh, this morning, Jennifer. I tried. We attempted to get hold of Dr. Gillespie. He was unavailable to speak this morning, as he's in Canberra. But a spokesman for the federal member said that Dr Gillespie is happy to present the petition to Parliament. Oh, that's lovely, isn't that? that that's great. Um, okay, so... It's been nice to hear that back from... Yeah, from so, so you're presenting it to uh, Dr Gillespie at 5pm um, uh, this Sunday at the airport, so just make sure you get there on time and fulfil your bit, part of the bargain. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you for joining us this morning. No problem. Thanks for your time. Mark. Okay, bye-bye. That's Jennifer Shirlpool from uh, Kilawarra. She's a, a, a concerned resident about uh, CSG who's put together this uh, petition. She also, of course, is a member of a number, number of activist groups such as the Manning Clean Water Action Group and Ground Swell Gloucester. Uh, and uh, she put this uh, petition together herself and uh, giving it to the federal member this Sunday at 5pm at the airport. It's 21 minutes past 9 o'clock.
Hey,